Oh. Um, the man I acknowledge as, um, in my opinion, the Igbo leader we have right now, not just in the diaspora, but also back home as well. I want to commend the World Igbo Congress for the very stellar work they've been doing. And also to thank my dear brother, Mazi, who is there, and my very dear brother, Dele, also. I've been following these proceedings intermittently for the past four and a half hours or thereabouts. I've been caught up in a few things, as you can imagine, a lot is happening back home. But there is something that this year's um, event has brought to light. It is the camaraderie and unity of purpose amongst the people of the South and to an extent those of us in the Middle Belt as well. And we must continue on this very plain until we all get what we are asking for. I have not come across any individual who is against freedom. Therefore, what we are asking for as a result of this very important occasion is that we must move forward together as one people, as an indivisible force, in order for us to demand what rightfully belongs to us, which is freedom. Today is a very critical day in the history of our people. We are remembering those who we are slaughtered and massacred unjustly by the Nigerian government and of course, by extension, the British government as well. We are remembering those who died as a result of the unofficial Third World War that took place in our land nearly 54 years ago. And as a result of that, this very day, as we renew this pledge every blessed year, we have sworn to forever remember these people. We must remember them because the Jews do the same. All over the world, people remember they are dead. In Rwanda, the same thing happens. And I don't know why there is this, should I say, conspiracy of silence to try to sweep this very important event in our history under the carpet. We lost over 5 million people, the second worst genocide in the history of man, only second to the Jewish Holocaust in Europe. And for some inexplicable reason, the world has decided to keep silence over this very matter. But we are not going to keep silence, not at all. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. We are going to vigorously and relentlessly pursue this very effort to recognize the genocide that was committed against Biafran people without apologies to anyone. It is a very good thing that before we came on air, I think the Ebony State government have now rescinded the threats they issued to all those who were intending to stay at home tomorrow. That is also commendable. It is not very often that I commend people, but I must say that I also commend Governor Willie Obiano, which I don't do very often, for the very critical work that he did today by laying a wreath at the cenotaph that he built for those that fell, for those that made it possible for us to remain alive this very day. I must say this to our people, those who are living, that it is because of the sacrifice of those brave men and women that that is the singular reason why we are not suffering the same fate as those of them from the Middle Belt, and to a very limited extent, those of our brothers and brethren from Ududuwa Republic. Why am I saying this? It is only in our land today that we do not have any significant presence of full and terrorist organizations in our bushes or in our forests. And why is that the case? Because our fathers taught us how to fight. They fought for Biafra, unaided, unassisted for over three years. We fought the two strongest major powers in the world as at that time, the USSR and Great Britain. Egypt fought against us. The OAU was against us with the exception of the likes of Judas Nyerere and Hufet Brenner of Cote d'Ivoire. We suffered immeasurably. And now, like then, Israel was under attack and they couldn't provide any meaningful help. But we survived it. Not out of our own might, not out of our own power, we survived it because God Almighty in heaven was with us. And this generation have now come to complete the work that those of them of 67 to 1970 started. And we are not going to stop. I want the world to understand me very clearly. We are not going to stop. It doesn't matter what it takes. 
It doesn't matter how many lives they extinguish. It doesn't matter the genocidal tendencies they bring with them into our land. We are not going to stop. Everybody listening, everybody watching, everybody remotely interested in justice and peace must understand this. Our destination is freedom, and that very place we're heading to is Biafra. And nobody, no soul on this earth can stop us. Instead of Biafra not to come, we all perish. I want our adversaries, our enemies to understand this very, very clearly. We are not going to retreat, not one iota, not one inch, because Biafra must come, because the hatred has continued to this very day. As I'm speaking and addressing all of you right now, they are still arresting extrajudicially murdering people in our land, people who are alien to our culture, our way of life, our tradition. They are in our land directing their people to slaughter, to kill without mercy. Unfortunately, those we regard as political leaders have connived with these people to ensure the decimation of their own population. That is the type of nonsense we can no longer condone. As you all know, there is no significant flanny presence in our land because our fathers taught us how to fight. And we are doing so today without apologies to any idiot. We're not going to apologize because we have been apologizing for nearly 50 years. And we have not gotten anywhere in terms of our collective advancement and development in the damnable zoological republic called Nigeria. That is why we must continue what we're doing. And that is why anybody who is remotely interested in the affairs of our people must understand this, that we are determined, doubly determined. 50 years, or should I say 54 years is a very long time, and 51 years since the end of the war. But now that we have come, or should I say now that God Almighty in heaven, has determined that we should come, we are not going to relent. We are not going to do anything whatsoever to jeopardize the sanctity and the holiness of this very mission. We love our people. We love every ethnic nationality that makes up Nigeria as it is presently constituted. We have no hatred towards anybody. We love peace. We love life. We love the progress of other people but we are in a country where people hate us for no reason, where people despise us for no reason, and we can no longer go and apologize. And Nigeria as a state, the entire Africa as a continent must acknowledge. The same way they acknowledge the genocide in Rwanda, they must rise up to acknowledge the genocide in Biafra land, or else there will be no peace, no development in the whole of Africa. And I'm not saying it apologetically. I am stating a fact that ought to be forcefully demanded for, and Biafra itself must be restored for those who have come before us, for their sacrifice, for their courage, for their gallantry and their bravery. It is a very good thing today that one of the co-hosts here is our brother Dele, a man that I cherish and I appreciate very much, and also the very excellent work that Mazi is doing. But let us make this thing very, very clear. We, we are wronged by the Nigerian state, by every ethnic group in Nigeria. I know that my good friend and brother, Obadai Mailafia, rang me and apologized a while ago for the role that they played in the massacre of Biafran people, the role that they played in aiding and abating a very unlawful invasion of Biafra land, because all Ojuku asked for was restructuring. The same thing we are arguing for today. Ojuku went to Aburi to argue for restructuring. Ojuku did not go to Aburi to declare any state of Biafra. He never went to Aburi to declare any war. Ojuku went to Aburi so that all of us in Nigeria, including those from the Middle Belt, from the West, everywhere can have freedom. The same thing we're asking for today. They twisted the narratives. They changed our history, they turned it upside down. They made us the villain. They tried to demonize our general, a man of peace that went to Aburi in Accra to go and in Ghana to go and negotiate for peace. A peace that Britain prevailed upon go on, not to implement. But over the years we've been taught that we are the aggressors. 
such nonsense can no longer hold, it can no longer obtain. And that is why, as I said earlier, unapologetically, we are pursuing the freedom of Biafra and nobody can stop us. Anybody on our path is going to fall, is going to die. Instead of Biafra not to come, every living organism in Nigeria will die, I swear to God Almighty in heaven, because we are not going back. It is a good thing today that every, some notable Nigerians are on this very platform discussing what transpired 54 years ago. Most have tweeted to say, may it not happen again. The only way to ensure that this will not happen again is the existence of a free, sovereign Biafran nation. That is the only panacea, nothing more, nothing less. Before we came here, Ladipo Market was on fire. These vandals and vagabonds are in our land killing people relentlessly. As I, I'm talking to you right now, they herded some people from Enugu to God knows where, maybe to go and kill them. And you have governors, you have political leaders, you have those who aspire to high office. They are all there. Nobody's talking, nobody's speaking because they have a lot to benefit and to gain by us being Fulani slaves, something that can no longer continue something we are not prepared to tolerate. That was something I said rather very fortuitously very many, many years ago. I said during one of my broadcasts on Radio Biafra that for Nigerians to understand that God is upset with them, that every tribe in Nigeria, every ethnic group in Nigeria will experience what we passed through during the Biafran war, that they too will also become refugees. And today there are ID camps, IDP camps everywhere. People that thought they were safe before now are fleeing their homes. The same thing that happened to us between 67 and 1970. And that is why our appreciation and our thanks for those men and women that fought to keep us safe can never, ever, ever be overestimated. We will continue to appreciate them. We shall continue to honor them. And I thank all of, I mean, those who are non-Biafrans. I understand that some people who are Biafrans came on this very platform and trying to play the script of their masters. That same divide and rule by saying there is something called uh, Southeast and South-South. All bunkum. I have said it many times on many forums, on many platforms, that everybody in the East, we are all one people. I don't understand why people are hung up about this divide and rule of Gowon. It was Gowon that created Cross River State. Gowon created River State. Not because he loves the people of the South, not at all, but because he wanted to divide us. And we must rise up. We must rise up to the game of these people and say no to them. Now that Yoruba and Igbo are one, do you see them trying to play that game anymore? Now that Biafra and Odudua are one and inseparable, bonded together in one, do you see them playing their stupid games? I don't know why some people will come and say they're from Nigeria, they're from, they're from South South. In all that to perpetuate that very division, which the Fulanis have cleverly exploited over very many decades and many years. I don't know when we are going to learn. And the sooner we learn, the better for us. I thank all of you once again. And this very effort to recognize the genocide against Biafrans continues until the United Nations and the whole world rise up to this very challenge and acknowledge that a great deal of injustice was done to Biafrans. Tomorrow is our sit at home, complete and utter lockdown everywhere. And as I said earlier, I do commend the governors for coming out and saying, that civil servants should not come or should not turn up to work tomorrow is a very good thing. We must all be bound together in order to ensure that Nigeria, first of all, takes the blame for what they did. And secondly, that the whole world will rise up to the obligation to the oppressed people and do the very right thing. Once again, I thank you all very much. And my very special thanks to Professor Ejofo, for the very wonderful and sterling work that you're doing, you and your team. Thank you very much.